Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're gonna talk about Bluetooth 5.2. So let's dive right into it. Well, first we have to understand, before we understand the latest version, what the heck is Bluetooth? So Bluetooth is wireless personal area network. Basically how Wi-Fi and Ethernet are local area network, this puppy is a smaller version of that, low, uh, personal area network. Basically it's meant from one device to one device. So this puppy uses radio spectrum of 2.4, 0 to gigahertz to 2.48 gigahertz now it's basically normal wi-fi spectrum almost every public and harry uses this spectrum because it's unregulated so this is what's the main foundation of it now you have to understand that whenever you have something like this like a bluetooth it's a standard so standard requires somebody to maintain it like for example sd card micro sd card mini sd card how the heck you make sure you buy a samsung sd card and you can put it into uh, you know uh, sony camera and it will work or do with canon or micron or something because there is a center governing body for example in SD card there is SD association which is like you know we're gonna regulate it so if we give you the stamp of SD that means it's gonna work with everything else that says that it complies with it so basically they make sure things work USB also has USB association so for Bluetooth there is Bluetooth special interest group or SIG so Bluetooth SIG is a huge corporation at this point in time simply because there is three 35,000 companies that are supporting it more than that actually because every company that has to say that you know they have a certified bluetooth they have to talk to these people and because of that bluetooth works basically you can buy bluetooth headphone from any manufacturer even a no name manufacturer is gonna work with any mobile phone which says bluetooth because of this giant corporation managing everything basically rules regulations spec sheet everything like that now the architecture of bluetooth is basically host controller interface basically there is a master and there is a student so your mobile phone is a master and your headset is the student now this whole idea was introduced in 1989 uh, basically it's 31 years old yes this puppy is old and in the early days the whole concept was just a headset now you're like if they're making headset can't they make uh, music clear well problem was back in that headset simply means low quality audio on a voice level uh, it was not good enough for like you know music listening so only voice was the primary focus of that now the formal public announcement was done like basically now public can buy normal things out of this was uh, 20 may 1998 yes this puppy is old very very old so you have to understand bluetooth has been going through multiple revision again it's old it's ancient at this point in time so what are the big changes the biggest change that happened like of course uh, you know uh, compatibility high quality bitrate and you know improved uh, speed and all that jazz that keeps happening that's like normal polishing the big update happened in bluetooth 4 where they introduced low energy but here's the deal low energy was not used for anything simply because uh, low energy was not built properly at that point in time which was which could allow um, you know headphones to work basically it was only used for your tax uh, your smart watches things of that nature it was not using for like you know day-to-day -day use so every mobile phone at that point in time basically that has uh, even today that says bluetooth 4.0 basically has bluetooth classic built into it so it can talk to a headset speaker and all that so the primary use does not give you the basically power saving features so this time they are fixing it in 5.2 that is very specific 5.2 they are introducing a new codec so be mindful whenever you are talking about radios on paper it's awesome it's like whoa in real life it's like seriously so for example uh, mobile phones generally have a throughput for audio digital bandwidth is around 1.5 mbps now bluetooth knows this for a fact that even if technically it should be able to transmit 2 mbps from point one a to point b it cannot do that reliably it's not a cable connection i was like dude i sent it that it went there so generally in radio communication what you have you send a packet and you wait for reply did you get that okay there, there is a like a you know back and forth to make sure that pockets are not lost now be mindful that also happens in your ethernet cable but because of low latency it's like almost uh, you know negligible for you but in bluetooth uh, because of that uh, serious hurdle that you have to like your he headphone will not be able to talk quickly enough they compress the heck out of it so they take uh, 1.5 mps pipe and compress this puppy to 345 kbps that's a lot of compression the reason for that even though bluetooth can technically do 2 mps is simply because in real life radio spectrum is never that reliable where it's like oh i sent two it went to no it would be like you sent two you would be lucky to get one on the other end so making sure that this is this thin allows them to have less packet drop and allows more reliable connection basically you put your headphone you can at least listen to the damn song so that's why it was done so what they are doing taking that same principle in this new codex lc3 they're taking the same bandwidth of 1.5 mps and compressing the hell out of it so they are compressing almost half uh 192 kbps now like 
why the hell they are compressing it more well two things have changed first more and more and more and more people are using wi-fi more and more equipments are using 2.5 gigahertz every tom dick and harry is using 2.5 gigahertz so for that reason the interference in this radio spectrum has grown exponentially so at this point in time your bluetooth headset is struggling to send the data from point a to point b without interference so the only way to make sure that you don't you know uh, suffer seriously because of that so they shrunk the pipe benefit of shrinking the pipe less interference less uh, drop packet and lower latency because again it will not have to hey did you got the packet like again if it has to only say that let's say 192 time uh, did you got the packet versus uh, you know 145 time it's like did you got uh, 345 times you get the point it's like lower latency now because of advancement in processor silicon and all that jazz we have finally the technology so we can compress the data much more while decompressing it even more efficiently benefit of that uh, in every listening test they did the corporation did at this point in time they are getting people are getting higher fidelity out of one 192 versus 345 uh, basically they are compressing it more but they're getting better output you're yeah, like how the heck is that possible like you know what kind of voodoo magic is that well if you're familiar with video encoding you know the same thing happened with h264 versus h265 so it's, it's something like that basically better compression and we have the horsepower nowadays in computational and so even uh, you know tiny airports have enough computation power where they can decode something like this so that will finally allow this, uh, you know, lower bandwidth to be used with low energy benefit. Your Bluetooth headset, if using the current battery structure, it should last for, let's say, you buy something right now and it says, you know, battery life in 20 hours, it should go to 30 to 50 hours. So awesome. Finally, low energy in actual day to day use. So which is awesome. Better data compression, lower latency, better range. Again, slimmer pipe is much easier to do and less interference. Awesome. So finally, your audio experience would be tangibly better. That's what people are hoping. But at least the fact that, uh, you know, on, at least on paper, you have better experience. Now that is okay. But the awesome part for me is basically it's using ISO synchronous channels. Yeah, I know this is a very weird name. Now benefit of that is Bluetooth was built as a PAN network, personal area network. It was like best case scenario was like one, two, one. That's what it was built for. But because more and more people are using it as a LAN and more and more people want to use it as a like, you know, Internet of Things device, they want to allow multiple connection at the same time. The same way how your Wi-Fi router talks to multiple devices at the same time. Like even a normal cheapo router can easily talk to five devices without even giving a damn about it. Now, again, you need enterprise grade if you want to talk to 2030, but you get the point. It's doable. So what, what will that allow? Like what will it allow in practical terms? It will allow handset to talk to multiple devices. Imagine it this way. You have a Bluetooth headset. It's awesome. Everything is fine. Everything is standing good. Battery life has deep. Uh, you connected to your mobile phone. Everything is awesome. But you're like, hey, I'm sitting on my laptop or my desktop. And it's like, I want to use Bluetooth. You have to unpair it from your mobile phone connected to that this will no longer be the case uh, reality would become like just connected just connected it will connect multiple like you can connect the tv you can connect the computer you can connect your mobile phone all of them would be connected simultaneously so if you have a phone call it will pause uh, you know basically pause the data on every other thing and uh, there are options where you can have headset you can be like you know connected to your mobile phone watching your tv but the moment you mute the tv it will pick up the call if there was a call so that should become normal if your equipment, uh, basically your headset and your mobile phone says 5.2. Another aspect of that, uh, two headsets can be used or more than that can be used at the same time. Imagine it this way, this is a TV. Now you live in an apartment most likely and you have a serious scenario where you do not use want, want to use speakers simply because every Tom, Dick and Harry near to you want to blow you up. Because again, you know, you don't want to start a, a very serious ruckus. Uh, you don't want to use speaker. Everybody wants to use headsets. Problem with that is you can only connect one like this awesome TV only one so this problem also would be also addressed so where you can have one TV and it's like you know connect like four or five however like depending on the situation you can have multiple systems connected so that's ultra awesome now on top of that they went into another level where broadcasting is possible now so far or everything that i talked about there is a back and forth communication but broadcasting is one way it's basically your tv is screaming out now you might be like why the heck you want that well think of it this way you went into a restaurant there is a television something is going on you want to listen to it you can't ask them to raise up the volume because the first thing every anybody else will ask is reduce the volume so the idea is every not tom dick and harry nowadays has bluetooth headset you can approach it and you're gonna scan the area basically how you scan the fm system and you're gonna detect the audio clip Ta-da! listen to it you don't have to change anything and in uh, apparently in european union uh, many news channels have dual language so you can select the language hindi or english uh, i'm saying hindi english basically french or german or something like that so you can literally do that like people even if they are using speakers uh, people may be listening to let's say german and you can be like okay scan and you will scan it it will speak in german then you scan it again it will 
you know speak in french and you like that i am you listening in french so that will allow like basically broadcasting would be possible at this point you can't play pause like that's why that that two way communication is important you can't do anything to the broadcaster but broadcaster can send data to you and this the system is designed to like almost a theater can be run on on bluetooth headsets only so that's the uh, you know possibilities of that that's why this isosomal channel is very useful in digital life like if once you start to use this technology you'll be like to how the heck we lived without it so that's the most amazing like audio good but again that is the same thing point of diminishing return you won't be able to tell like unless you are like i'm listening to flag sound in this i completely sounds isolated room you're not gonna tell the difference this you will tell the difference so what we can expect in the future well here's the you know cold water in your dreams it's gonna take uh, the bluetooth 5.2 will take at least two years to reach the market the specification the everything i'm talking about was standardized in december 2019 now the world ended in 2020 so you can understand that there has been serious delay in uh, you know uh, adoption and all that again we have been shrinking adoption cycle we went from like you know it a new standard came out it took five years to like new standard came out like three years and we have been shrinking that successfully but the world ended so this process Process has been delayed so people are easily expecting at least two years before uh, basically at the end of 2022 or one you can be sure yeah this is a normal thing where you don't think about you know multi-point communication and all that you don't have it's just like you have bluetooth it works so it's gonna reach now this is one of the things where you can finally say bluetooth has tangible upgrades everything till this point is like very niche yeah low energy only for smartwatches how many smartwatches you see versus how many bluetooth audio devices you see so it's finally useful that multi-point connection now what if you are like hey dude i want this kind of feature right now thankfully there is a you know uh, options right now which you can utilize basically you can buy headphones or headsets that have uh, multi-point connection basically jbl has a surprisingly affordable uh, multi-point system basically if you are a single individual and like dude i have headphones but i have a laptop and mobile phone i want both of them connected JL, uh, basically jbl allows that surprisingly low prices where you can connect both of them so that's doable if you want to do that you can do that easily and what if you want like you know a married couple and all that husband and wife and you want to be like okay uh you know uh, i want to use my basically tv to talk to two people you can buy bluetooth multi-point transmitter where you can have at least two devices communicating like there are a more expensive version which will allow you to communicate to at least like you know four headsets but two is good enough for uh, you know normal couple so if you uh, want to experience that multi-point should be the next thing you should look into your next purchase and uh, you know multi-point transmitter if you have two people so future is very interesting and this is finally something useful it's like yeah finally i can enjoy it so awesome i'm very excited about this but you have to be mindful it will take at least two years and the world ended in 2020 so i cannot be angry about this so this was my presentation on bluetooth 5.2 I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press this like, press it twice to show me extra disappointment, and please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.